I have a confession to make. When I was a kid, I never cared for Pokemon. This doll community is all about Pokemon dolls, but I was that one weird kid that was obsessed with Digimon Adventure. I didn't care for either, but it's Valentine's Day. So let's make... Rosemon. I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're weird. And also Enchantarium. <laughs> and it's Valentine's Day. I said it's Valentine's Day, no? All right, let's go. We know that this project will be easier on a playline doll like Monster High or Barbie, but we're not choosing the easy way today. A few months ago we decided to buy a second-hand alternative smart doll body with slightly different proportions. It's an original sculpt done by Adika and it's made from a very soft and flexible silicone. The first thing we've got is a flex bust. <laughs> As you can see the size is pretty big, which means it's perfect for Rosemon. <laughs> and the next thing to unbox is flex body. Unlike smart dolls, this body is seamless in the hip area, so the legs are connected to the torso. This is a very rare feature in the doll world, so we're excited to work with it more in the future. We're used to vinyl, plastic and resin dolls, so touching a silicone doll was a funny experience. Squishy! Whoa. Even though this body is meant to be a smart doll body replacement, the measurements and the curves of the body are way different, so I decided to start from scratch and drape the bodysuit on the doll. Here are the things that I want to accomplish in this garment. One, it needs to be fully lined with white fabric, as I have already stained too many dolls. Two, I want the least possible amount of visible seam lines, so this is made in one piece, except the cups, which the boobs on this were so large, the cups themselves also had to be split in half. And three, we need to figure out how to keep the belly cut out, because I'm going to simplify this design in other places, so this has to stay. With a rough idea of how things will go together, I kind of averaged the two draped halves of the test bodysuit, swapped out to a stretch sewing setup, which means using a walking foot, I used some warbla to make an armature for the cup, got the cup pattern made, and I can move on to sewing the final version. Both of the fabrics I used were a very thin lycra, and I cut the white layer with the full length of the leg, but for the red layer I thought I was being smart by ending the bodysuit above the knee. My reasoning was that the shoes were gonna cover that up, so it didn't need to be there and add bulk. I decided to start with the cutout, which did bite me in the butt later, but it was the only part of the design I didn't test, so it was better to test it now and fix it before anything else was done. I traced the shape onto the bodysuit, cut out some interfacing and stitched the layers along the marked line. Then I cut out the middle, cut some relief notches and turned the thing out through the cutout. And unsurprisingly, I was not happy with the result. Dlaczego ja nie testuję rzeczy? Ah, as you can see, stuff has happened. I didn't like this, so I tried to do it in a nicer way with some net, and I think that's how I'm gonna do it for the final piece. So I have to seam rip this, but I guess it's worth it because it's gonna look so much nicer and crisper on the tips. So let's do that. After unpicking the seam and trimming both the layers to the appropriate shape, I added fusible tape around both of the cutouts. To make sure the shape wouldn't distort too much, I had the interfacing, plus I stretched out the net before pressing it on so that it would hold the shape of the cutout better. Then it was a matter of pressing it with the iron, lining up the layers and stitching around the edge of the shape. Next, I assembled the cups, which because of the huge honkers had to have a seam, which I decided to place from in between the badonkas towards the tip. I set the cups into the lining, which I had to loosen the layers we just fused to do, and added the red cups to the bodysuit as well. I wanted to add these loops to the back to create a loop and bead closure, but the lace I bought wasn't quite right, so I trimmed it so that the loops were evenly spaced out. This was a big mistake, and the back closure was a nightmare. I stitched the loops to the red layer, and then I stitched the back with the main and lining right sides together, which was hard because the cutout was preventing the fabric from going the places it should. 
It is the moment of truth. Is it? Oh no! Oh no! That's a little, a little too little. God dang it! These are fine. These are fine, I would say. Oh, can I pull more? Oh yeah, I can pull out more. Okay, it's fine. We're fine. No. I admit, I am a little dramatic sometimes. I redid the stitch, pretended I was happy with it, and put the bodysuit aside to prepare for the other cup. I cordially invite you to the Warbler era of Enchantarium. This was my first time working with it, and I am obsessed. I initially thought I would make the cups on a wire somehow, like bras are made, but I couldn't wrap my head around how I would achieve a smooth look. Even though they aren't perfect, they don't have to be, because they are only the support for the cups. After this brief happy intermission, I contemplated what to do with the back, decided not to bother for now, and finished the back seam towards the crotch. Now I was going to sew the inseams of the two layers separately, and this was very confusing, because the cutout was, again, preventing me from fully pulling the fabrics through. For a moment, I thought that I did something wrong, like I made a Mobius strip or something, but it was just the cutout messing with me and I was able to turn this thing to the right side. At this stage I added beads to the back for the closure, which were not a permanent thing, and those thumbs up are facing the wrong way. After checking the fit, I decided to glue the cups in, starting with the red ones, which I glued to the inside of the Warbler cup so that no glue would be able to transfer to the nice side. Then I took the inner cups, glued them in a little bit, and then stitched them to the red fabric so that they don't peek out in the front. Let's check how it looks. And now that we are done with the bodysuit, I think it's time for a break. Thankfully, today's video is sponsored by Merch Gardens, which is a perfect way to spend any break. I'm a sucker for Match 3 games for when I get stuck in a project and need to clear my mind a bit. And this will happen a lot on this video. And Merch Gardens takes you to a wonderful lush garden where there's no end to beautiful flowers and wildlife that are delight to keep looking at. Especially when the weather outside looks like this. What I like about Merge Garden is that you can play this game in many different ways. If you want to chill with a match 3 puzzle, they got you. If you want to explore the mystery of the garden and find out the truth behind people trapped in the garden, they got you. And if you want to merge weeds into beautiful flower arrangements in your virtual sanctuary, they also got you. This game is perfect for everyone to pick up, no matter how much or little you play games. The game is constantly being updated with new events to keep you entertained too. Head on to the link in our description and download the game, or scan the QR code on screen to start playing Merge Gardens. It's totally free to play. Now that we have chilled out, let's get back to work. We still have a few blank Smartle heads in our stock box, but this time we decided to use a 3D printed one. Most of the humanoid Digimons have a mask, and Rosemon, as the name suggests, has a rose-like mask. The base is from the Smart Doll website and the rose I found on Thingiverse. I'll leave links to these two models in the description. It took me a lot of time to figure out the right workflow on how to connect these two pieces so that the final result is printable. I had to thicken the petals and merge them with the head and then sculpt the face petals in the right shape. The last step was to add a little smirk and this is how she looks. As you can see, Barb was very excited. We were trying to test out a lot of things at once for this print. As we tried to record a time lapse and test our new magnetic build plate, which Barb installed recently. The time lapse went great, but the print did not. Oh no. No! After reprinting, though, it looks like the magnetic build plate makes Barb happy because it's easier to take the stuff off now. The head has a hole for the hair, a few holes on the top for better drainage, and one for the neck pick. After a sanding session and two coats of MSC, I can start painting the petals. I chose a combination of red and pink with some artificial shadows near the edges. Then I painted the lips, trying to enhance the confident smile in the sculpt. I'm adding a little bit of chalk pastels to make the face more alive. 
and a layer of shiny Perlux powder. The last step of the face is a glossy acrylic varnish on the lips for an extra shine and sass. It's not visible at first glance, but she has a long blonde ponytail, and these are two fiber options that I can give her. I decided to go with the warmer blonde, but first I have to prepare the base. It's a wire covered with medical tape for a better grip and painted to match the color of the hair. After I straighten the fiber, I can glue the wefts around the base. And when it's dry, I can fix it in place. Barb says it looks not only like a ponytail, but also like a pony's tail. Okay, the cape was actually the first thing I did and it involved some draping at first because I really wanted to get that scrunched up look on the shoulders. After I thought it was looking good, I tried it out and it was looking meh. So I started over until I got something else that I liked, but then, you guessed it, I started over again. At some point, I thought I had it, so I proceeded with making the shape of the bottom of the cape by adding some more fabric and cutting it on the mannequin roughly first, then cleaning it up on the table and checking it on the mannequin again. It might be too short. I then transferred the pattern to some paper. This is the fabric I want to use. And I doubt that there's enough of it in one piece. There was, in fact, enough of the fabric, but I had to do this. I think I'm gonna move to the floor. I'll cut one here, and I'll cut one here, and we should be good. We were, in fact, not good. This iteration went through a lot of seam ripping and redoing to be eventually cut into these leaf shapes. I ironed some interfacing on them to sandwich a wire shaped like the veins between two layers of fabric for posability. I then glued a white layer to make the white brighter, more like in the original design. I made five big and five small leaves and attached them to a neckband and that was it. I was bummed that I had to give up on the original design at the shoulder, but at least we keep the general pointy shape even though it was in a couple of pieces instead of in a single cape. Another accessory that had to be changed for the purpose of being makeable at all were the gloves. These had to be lined as well, so the spiky top had to go. And obviously making gloves for a doll is not really a thing because their fingers are glued together. So I went for the first season wink style things. They were pretty simple. I hemmed the edges with hemming tape and my iron and then sewed them all into tubes. I then turned the red tubes to the right side stuffed the white ones inside the red ones and whip stitched around the edge similar to how I did the bra cups. We have the Attica seamless arms on order but they unfortunately are stuck in customs and are not gonna be here for this project so I had to steal arms from one of our other current customs. And by the way I ended up doing a corset like tie in the back. It's just as ugly as the previous versions but I give up. Let's decorate the cape. I'm painting the edges with green paint to hide the white thread peeking through on the green side. I'm adding a few more details because I can't leave a big white surface without any ornaments. <laughs> I painted it green and gold and then added the Ds from the original design. I'm using 3D fabric paint, but not from the original packaging. I have it in a cellophane cone because that's the technique I use for henna painting. When it's dry, I can flip the coat to the other side and paint some organic detail on the leaves. It's actually only highlighting the bumps from the wire inside. And it looks like this. My boyfriend, who is a very talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing... <laughs> graphic designer and 3D modeler, was so kind to let me trick himself into modeling a last and shoe base for me. So let's make shoes. I don't know if you can tell, but making shoes is my favorite. I first made the pattern for the insoles by taping the bottom of the last and cutting it out of some cardboard, which I doubled up for strength. I added these to the lasts with tape and proceeded to make paper mache structures for the shoes. I started with some TP, but then changed my mind and I did it with some cotton instead. It usually dries pretty solid, but I guess I was using a different glue this time, because even though I left these to dry overnight, they were not stiff enough to hold the shape of the shoe. It should be hard, and this one isn't, and that's not good. That's what she said. I mean, I said it, but you get the joke. 
I tried hardening these with some nail gel and it worked, but I realized that the way I had these designed, which 100% it was my call, so it's my fault. Boyfriend, do you hear that? My fault. Please don't stop modeling for me. When I stretch the lycra over this, there will be a big dip because the foot is a bit farther back than the shape of the last. So I tried extending the structures with the nail gel, but it was hella ugly, so I decided to start over. This time I experimented with using Warbla for these structures and oh my, oh my god, I was sleeping on Warbla for way too long. This is the Cobra cast one, it's sticky and I think it's supposed to be sticky, but it feels better than the pearly I used for the cups in terms of being able to stretch it over the last. So I just used some plastic wrap on the cast on the last to prevent it from sticking too much. I think next time I will try to get Teflon tape and use that as a barrier. I stuck the structure to the insoles and I think it's going to work beautifully. So let's cut some fabric. I again had to simplify the top edge of the shoe and decided to embrace the diagonal design in the bodysuit bust and the gloves and do the same thing here. This is basically a sock. I hemmed the top folded it in half and sewed it shut. Then I stretched the socks on our bases, stuffed them with some cotton to make sure the feet can actually support the doll and not just wobble around, and I glued the upper into the soles. Aren't they so cute? Now because these are stretchy, there is a little step in the fabric where the red ends, so I trimmed it diagonally to at least pretend that it was meant to be there and I can try the shoes on with the outfit. I think these might be my best pair. For a minute, I considered painting the soul's gold to match with her hair, but I decided to go with the original concept and paint them black. But I couldn't stop myself from adding red bottoms. They look so satisfying. Now, let's make a whip that goes around her body. One of my friends suggested an electric wire as a base. He came up with an idea to cut the slit, pull out some of the wire, and bend it in the shape of the thorns. And it was a very good idea, but it worked only on a short cable, and we need around one and a half meter here. So I modified the technique and cut the wire instead of keeping it in one piece. Then I sculpted the thorns with epoxy clay and painted the whole thing lime green. To prevent staining, I'm adding two layers of matte acrylic varnish. This is how it looks when it's on the doll. Barb sculpted this gem from polymer clay and it was pink before she put it in the oven to cure, but it turned out um, brown. <laughs> so I'm painting it white first and then pink, adding a few pearly white details. The ponytail needs one more accessory and it's a hairband with two flowers. As a last detail, I'm adding a few drops of resin to the top of the rose to emitted little droplets of dew. And with this done, she's ready. This is how she turned out. I was really hyped for the project at the start, but I gotta admit, somewhere in the middle, when it got hard, I kinda doubted if we were going to make it. This kind of design would be easier done on a Monster High doll where you can just sculpt the whole thing onto the doll. But this challenge was a nice challenge. Thankfully the shoes made me excited for the project again and we were able to complete it. There are a few more Digimon designs that we would like to make in the future, but this all depends on you guys. I'm not going to pretend that it's easy to make videos when the views are at the all-time low, so tell us what characters you want to see. Maybe we are just missing the mark topic-wise. We were thinking of finally doing a Zodiac series with a twist, and some characters that we were thinking about were the Powerpuff Girls, Adventure Time characters, Kim Possible, or maybe you want us to bring back Winx characters to the channel. Or maybe you have other ideas. There will be a poll in the description, but do let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day, happy Valentine's Day, and we'll see you next time. Bye! No, 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 no!